Lenore Gush uh, writes to us on Facebook, uh, is a nationwide freeze on mortgages and rents possible? And the answer is yes, it is possible. And that is something that I will do my best to see uh, is in the next legislation. Uh, right now, there are people who have been unable to pay their rents, uh, pay their mortgages, uh, and they should not in this moment, this crisis, be thrown out of their apartments and their homes. So we are looking, in fact, uh, as Lenore requests, at a nationwide freeze on mortgages uh, and rents. Um, Um, Jordan Alexa writes on Facebook, uh, I recently received news that I am facing a 30% pay decrease. Uh, I can no longer afford my rent, utilities, and bills. My landlord still expects prompt payment this month and next. My question is, are we working towards a nationwide rent and mortgage freeze? And as I just indicated a moment ago with regard to Lenore's question, yes, we are but we're also working to make sure, Jordan, that you receive, if you saw a 30% decrease in your pay, that that decrease is made up uh, by the federal government and that you are made whole. Um, uh, Mary uh, Hanrahan writes, uh, how can we ensure that all of our frontline workers have all the uh, personal protective equipment and ventilators that they need. And um, uh, Mary, that is exactly what we have got to do. And to my mind, this speaks to a, an extraordinary weakness of our public health system tied into our general weakness of our overall health care system. And that is, it is incomprehensible to me to believe that at a time when we need literally billions of masks and we need gowns and we need gloves that we were so unprepared for this epidemic. So the goal right now must be for the federal government through the Defense Production Act to tell the private sector that we don't need more socks, we don't need more t-shirts, we don't need more underwear. But what we do need right now are masks for the American people, for our medical personnel, and we need the other equipment including ventilators. And right now there are some companies, uh, General Motors, Ford, and others are beginning to move into transitioning to making ventilators. This is not easy. And the problem is they were asked to start much too late. They should have been asked a long time ago at the beginning of this crisis. So we're seeing some movement now, uh, but we should have begun this a while ago. Um, uh, Aaron, uh, Eisenschmidt writes on Facebook, how can we better prepare if this were to happen again? And, and not to, you know, make people nervous, but, you know, we have seen a number of different types of pandemics in the, re le in the last 20 or 30 years. There is, in fact, uh, no reason to believe that we may not see this again. And I hope very much, and if I have anything to say about it, it will definitely be the case, that we are fully prepared for future pandemics, and by the way, that we have a very tighter, much tighter relationship with governments and universities uh, and uh, researchers all over the world. Because obviously this pandemic is not just an American issue, it's impacting the entire world, and the entire world has got to utilize all of its researchers, all of its scientists, all of its doctors to help us not only address this crisis, uh, but to be better prepared for the future. Uh, Orin S. Webb uh, writes on Facebook, uh, why does our government uh, prioritize big business uh, more than workers? Uh, well, Orin, that's a very good question. Uh, I think I voted for the uh, $2 trillion bill that passed, I don't know, it was 10 days ago or so because it had a number of important provisions in it that go to working people. And by the way, if you compare this bill to the 2008 Wall Street bailout bill, no question in my mind 
that this is a far, far superior bill because many of us fought to make it a better bill. In other words, there is now uh, extended unemployment, uh, which means, as I think many of you know, uh, that on top of the normal unemployment check you would get, there's gonna be another $600 on top of that for a four month period and unemployment benefits will be extended another 13 months. There is a very substantial amount of money going in to help small businesses retain uh, their workforce. Uh, there is going to be a $1,200 check going out to every, virtually every adult in America and $500 for every kid. There's money going to hospitals, money's going to cities and towns, not enough, and we need more. The weakness, uh, to my mind, in this bill, and I think this is Oren's point, is that as part of the compromise, not that I wanted, not that any other progressive wanted, but what the Republicans wanted is at least $500 billion to go uh, to Trump to allow him to help corporate America. And the fear is there will not be any strings attached to that money. I fear that it will be used politically in the midst of an election going to those battleground states where Trump wants to look good. Uh, but that was the concession uh, that had to be made. Uh, so much in this bill will help working people, but that particular provision, $500 billion uh, going to uh, corporations with very, very minimal uh, oversight is something that bothers me uh, very much. All right, uh, let me uh, just thank all of you uh, for uh, being uh, with me tonight. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to continue to communicate uh, with you all because these are very stressful times. These are difficult times. And, and if you're feeling overwhelmed, trust me, you're not the only person in the country who feels that way. So bottom line is we are all in this together. I look forward to hearing your ideas. We need your support. We need your support to make sure that Congress has the courage to respond in the necessary way to the unprecedented crisis that we face. So we'll be back to you asking your help in making sure Congress does the right thing in standing up for the working families of this country. So uh, thank you all very much for joining me this evening. I look forward to chatting with you in the near future.